Hi, this screencast is going to show you how to help us help you with issues related to the web form module. Hi, my name is Jake Rockwitz. I'm known as Jay Rockwitz on the web. I'm a Drupal developer and software architect. I built and maintain the web form module for Drupal 8. Well, to start off, I'd like to pose a question. How can you help us? Well, think before you act. Think twice before you create an issue. In other words, it's very stressful when you're working on a project and you find an issue, but pause. Think about it. Take some time out replicate the issue, and I'm going to walk through some steps to walk you through before you create an issue. Well, it's very important to read the issue queue handbook, which will just give you some guidance on the proper ways to create an issue, which includes searching before creating your issue, updating existing or open ones if you can find when you find them. Uh, keep old tickets closed. This is a tricky one, but if it's a really old ticket from a year, six months ago, Leave it closed, but if it's recently fixed or recently closed, it's probably a regression, so you should reopen those tickets. You do need to reopen. Don't just comment on a closed ticket. You need to reopen it and say, needs review. And very important when you're creating issues, think about one problem per issue. It's the best way we can resolve it, because someone can do a patch to fix that one issue, and then they can move on to the next. It's very important this is about the issue queue, and you shouldn't be posing questions about custom coding or theming. That can be handled in other venues like the forums or Slack. And and to walk through how to create a good issue, it's, it's important to use the issue template, which I will show you what that is. And and what you're really trying to do when you create an issue is describe the problem. If you can offer a solution, you got to document the issue. you got to give a full explanation. And it comes for me, comes down to the steps to reproduce the issue or the tools you need to reproduce the issue. And, and you should confirm your issue using Simply Test Me. If you're unsure exactly what the nature of it is, simply, it simply tells me it's just a sandbox that you can install the web form module and isolate your problem and make sure that you know exactly what the issue is. Because sometimes modules won't interoper interoperate properly and it might be another module that's causing a problem. And I, I think it's important to emphasize at this point with creating an issue, be patient because it's people are working for free. Some issues are harder to debug than others. There, some people are working on other problems and these things can take time to resolve. I'm going to jump over and show you some things on the web form module. I'm on the main page. I click through and click through to the issues. You definitely should use the filter. If you're doing um, Drupal 8 stuff, you should filter by 8.x. And I'm going to even show you the first issue because it's going to give you a hint of how to use the issue template. I'm going to show you where that's coming from. So it's issue template describes the problem, motivation, proposed resolution, remaining tasks, user interface changes. I add references sometimes. It just helps setting some guidelines. And now if we jump over to issues, and we go to create an issue, you're going to get guidance here of kind of the stuff I've just talked about, where it's talking about the issue summary template, which if you click here, you can see the template. You can cut and paste this right into the issue queue body, and it just helps give you some guidance and a starting point. And you don't have to fill in all of these. I think the biggest one is the problem or the motivation. Why are you looking? Sometimes it's a change you want. And explain why you want the change. And you could propose a resolution. How do we fix it? Um, What's the workarounds? And then these are optional. I mean, API changes, some issues don't have them. Data model changes, the same thing. And all these steps that are listed here, I've just explained to you, but you need to read the issue queue handbook. That'll give you a lot of help. And if you need help, I'm going to show you, you know, list these out, but you got to look at the web form handbook, the IRC, forums, and get more information outside of the issue queue if you have different coding or theming questions. Um, moving ahead, I want to emphasize Simply Test Me, which is here. It's a site that lets you spin up sandboxes for Drupal sites. And I filled in the web form module. I picked the latest release. You can pick the dev release. You can even add patches. You click launch, and it just starts building you a simple Drupal site that then you have to go through and complete. But it's very isolated. Think of it as like a plain vanilla Drupal install where you can just look at the issues. Moving back, I'm going to move ahead and say, how can we help you now? Well, there's lots of development tools available, and you should use them. So these tools of the trade, verbose error logs, recent log messages, looking at the status report, taking screenshots, exporting configuration, using the development web form modules, those can help you get the configuration exported. And, and you should also look at browser tools for front-end issues like the JavaScript console or CSS inspector to see what's going on. Um, I'm going to demo some things about that. I'm going to, I have a plain vanilla Drupal site right here. I'm going to start with the verbose error logs. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go into development and turn on logging and reporting. And you really just need to turn this on, and this will give you all the information. If you get a very generic error, just like error, if you check off all messages with backtrace information, it's going to show you the full stack. 
and those arrows will get logged over here into recent log messages. And usually an error will be typed PHP and it'll get capture the full error message and you can see that. Sometimes it's very helpful if something's happening, like something just stops working. Usually it's getting captured in this recent log messages and you can see it, especially Ajax or callbacks where just nothing happens. It's almost always logged here and it's definitely worth coming here and looking at it. And you can, you know, I also recommend taking screenshots of the problems if there's little nuances, those always help. And now I kind of want to show you how to export configuration. Now I have the web form and web form develop module turned on. And the web form, you know, develop modules are meant to help developers, but they can also help you file issues because I'll show you in the web form module. Um, see, I have the contact form. Let's say, you know, jump over here. Uh, the, the develop module, if you turn it on, set the permissions, you get a develop tab. And it'll show you output about each web form. You, the main one I want you to look at is the export tab, which is being provided by the web form module for Drupal 8. So this is a Drupal 8 specific feature. If you click on it, it will give you all the configuration information about this specific form. And you can do this. If you find an issue, you can create a very simple form that isolates just the issue, export it here. You can even scroll down to the bottom and click download. And this single file, if you upload it with your issue, gives the developers and maintainers a perfect example of what's broken and something to work off of. And we all are looking at the same exact form. We're not trying to manually create the issue. It makes a really big difference. Moving ahead, I want to point out other ways to get help. And there's a web form cookbook for Drupal 8, and there is the handbook. And these are tips and tricks to help resolve issues. Some issues or feature requests are handled in recipes where it's just like, build, install, you know, this custom module, install this contrib module, or use this custom module. IRC is very active in the Drupal community. You can ask questions there. Slack, there's a Drupal Slack channel. There's a dedicated web form Slack channel that I actually am active on. Um, Drupal Answers is great for those other questions, those theming questions, those coding questions. How do I do this? And, you know, sometimes people even post issues there, and I'm on there, and I'll pull those issues back into the web form issue queue. And, and Finally, you can pay a developer. There's a whole list of committers for Drupal, the Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 version of the web form module. And we're all consultants and available to help you. And there's also a marketplace for companies and agencies that do work in, in the Drupal community. So finally, I'd like to remind you, help us help you and say thank you.